Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy re reading for your Wednesday, your hump day. Uh, December 4th, 2019. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this is dated for Wednesday the 4th, it doesn't mean it has to resonate on the 4th of December. Whenever you watch this reading and it resonates for you, then that's the message for you at that time, okay? Um, first things first, I all, I all, first of all, I want to I want to beg your forgiveness of my manicure. I was supposed to redo my nails last night and that just didn't happen. Um, some other things happened. Nothing bad. Absolutely nothing bad. Actually, it was pretty good. It's just, I just never got around to doing my nails. So it is in uh, a bit of disarray. So please forgive me. I apologize. I will do them as soon as I can. Second of all, um, I was planning on doing happy hour tonight, um, but... I got a message from a very good friend of mine last night who found tickets to see Cher on sale for a fairly, quite a reasonable price. And I was like, um, yes, please. So I am seeing Cher tonight. <laughs> Hence me wearing the shirt. Yes. I am super excited about that. I have never seen Cher live before. This is like... Like, I'm so, like, I'm almost like, this This can't even be real. Um, so, alas, we are not doing happy hour tonight. However, I will be able to do it tomorrow. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm planning on doing it then. And happy hour is going to be kicked off with another unboxing because I have two more packages here that have been sitting here in my room for like about a week now because I want to open it with you guys. Um, since they're things that are sent by you guys. And then there may be more. I have to check the P.O. box, so I'm going to do that tomorrow morning. But um, So happy hour is going to happen tomorrow, um, Thursday, December 5th, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, yeah, here on YouTube. And we're going to start with, um, well, you can also, you can follow me on Instagram if you haven't done so already, and I'll be going live to do an Inst Instagram, Instagram reading there for the Insta fam. And then you can join me here at 6 p.m. The, the Instagram live reading is going to start like around 5.30ish, maybe a little earlier than that. Actually, I do like to start around maybe 5.15. That gives me a good 45 minutes to sit here and chat with you guys on Instagram. Um, and then join me here at six o'clock for happy hour. Yeah, that's going to be exciting. It's really cool. Well, I'll remind you guys about it tomorrow. Um, other than that, that's about it. So, okay, so let's get into let's get into the energies today. Um, so the first card that came out is this ten of swords, and this ten of swords came out yesterday. I don't think I have enough light here. And I don't actually know where my lamp has gone to, unfortunately. Sorry, guys. Um, I hope this is bright enough. But the, the Ten of Swords here, this came out yesterday. And what we were talking about with this yesterday was, you know, the worst is behind you. Quite frankly, I don't know how this guy made it out of that suit of armor. <laughs> you know what I mean? With all those swords sticking out of him but alas he's made it out and he's looking he's looking back on it and i really get an idea a feeling of looking back on the past looking back on you know being on the outside of a really mm, i'm hearing for some of you a really dangerous situation uh and that could be mentally a, a, an abuse and, and I, if it's dangerous I, i'm i can only assume it's abusive right um and that would be mentally physically i got i really hope not physically but it's as if as if mental or emotional abuse is any less traumatic or 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 you know whatever than than physical but like whatever <laughs> um but basically it looks like it feels like somebody is looking back on the past something that really hurt them you know you're you're out of it now the 10 of swords tens are a completion the 10 of swords is often a card of saying the worst is behind you and yet somebody keeps focusing on it what i'm get what i heard when the ten of swords came out and i was i was just channeling the message i heard basically crying over spilt milk um and that's a really harsh way of saying it that's the way that's the way it came through so I'm, that's what that's the way i'm going to i'm gonna you know communicate it 
please take that with a grain of salt. But I f the reason why I feel like they're saying someone is cr basically crying over spilled milk is whatever this situation is that has hurt you, it's like eclipsing everything in your life. It's like all consuming. It, it, and it's especially the, the worst part about that is you're not even in it anymore. Ten of Swords, the worst is behind you. It's like you're on the outside looking in and yet you can't stop looking at the wreckage. It's, it's, an, it's like... It's like someone witnessing a car accident and not being, and, and just the image of that car accident is just playing on over and over and over in their head. But however, there is, and, and that could seem, that could be pretty involuntary, right? Because, you know, witnessing a car accident, especially a car accident in which you witnessed a, a number of people either get hurt or or worse, lose their lives. That's really that's extremely traumatic, right? And I'm not to, I'm not sitting here saying that what it is you're dealing with that's symbolized by this ten of swords here wasn't traumatic, and yet there's 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 still a twinge of free will in the sense that and autonomy. I just heard, yeah, spirits just said autonomy that you have to keep that would be able that that you could use to keep yourself from going over from the playing this over and over and over in your head yes there were some sort of injustices here okay this is the the backside of justice in which you know basically um demons have been running running amok okay no one's here to deny that it, okay right it you're you're right it happened obviously Obviously, it happened. No one is trying to take that away from you. However, what is really needed here is to learn to, to, to have boundaries. And what I'm getting specifically is this is a very much a lesson or was a lesson. Whatever this situation was, it very much was a lesson in boundaries. But you're, I th what I feel like is happening here is someone is getting too caught up on in this. This is coming across really harsh. Um, very cutthroat. Please take this with a grain of salt. And I'm not trying to be mean, an asshole, a bitch. I'm not trying to like devalue your 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 diminish what it is you've been through or 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 dismiss your feelings. But um, it's like you need to take your power back. And what 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 came out? What was crossing this ten of swords is the nine of pentacles. The nine of pentacles is crossing this here, and the nine of pentacles has a bit of an energy of maturity. It's like saying, "Okay, look, all right, look, yes, I've been through this. Yes, it sucked. Yes, it was shitty. Yes, it really hurt." Okay, but I'm not going to cry over this any longer. I'm going to pick myself up and I'm going to move forward. And I'm going to be a better version of myself than I was in the past. Even if you need to have a little bit of twinge of spite in your walk as you do this, as long as it gets you up on your feet and moving again, then so be it. All right. Do what you need to do. But it's time to let this go. And and this might be for someone who is actually dealing with this. This actually might be what you're going through, or it could just be symbolic. But what I got the one of the 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 um the definitions or one of the explanations that spirit gave this gave for me for gave to me for this was that of the twin flame journey and the chaser, um, and like the runner and chaser dynamic and the chaser. Is symbolized by this this energy here with the ten of swords, right? And they're they're crying over it. They're they got they've been really hurt in the situation. They're devastated. They don't know what to do, and they are just obsessively continuing to think about it. Now I understand the twin flame situation is a little bit different. Those obsessive thoughts are things that you can't just stop that. Okay, but okay, so you can't stop it. You can't just like say, you know what, I'm not going to think about this anymore because that's not necessarily going to work. It's not designed to work that way. Okay, that's great. But instead of just going over it, the same thing over and over and over again, instead what you really need to be doing is looking at the situation and finding the piece and, and figuring out what it's symbolizing for you. Figure out what it's, what it's um, 
bringing up for you? What wounds do you have that can be healed in relation to this situation? And instead of just sitting there crying, woe is me, look at what happened, this is terrible, I got my heart broken, I got trampled all over, blah, 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 I got backstabbed, I was destroyed, blah, 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 whoa, whoa. like, woe is me, woe is me, instead of just sitting there feeling sorry for yourself, you have to at some point get up and start pulling your pieces back together. You have to at some point get up and start putting together the lesson that this was trying to teach you. You have to at some point get up and take your power back and be like, you know what, I'm better than this. Nine of Pentacles. This very well could be someone in that part, that 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 um that phase of the twin flame activation or twin flame, and it's so interesting because I watched a video yesterday, and I don't remember this guy's name, but he's I mean it's someone that I've been hearing about a lot, especially from Aluna Ash, and it was his perspective on twin flames and his name is oh geez hold on where are you there he is max khan i'm sorry not max matt matt khan his his most recent video on soul contracts twin flames and soulmates and it made so much sense it made so much sense um his matt m-a-t-t Khan, K-A-H-N. You guys have probably seen him. Many of you have probably watched that already, but it made so much sense. It made so much sense. Um, and you guys, if you want to watch it, I highly recommend you do so. Now, this doesn't have to be for someone that's dealing with a twin flame situation. This really could be anything, but that was the easiest frame of reference that spirit could give me to get really uh, help me understand what the message is here, all right? Excuse me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cough. <clears throat> but basically what I just heard was it is time to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and start get to walk in again. Okay. You can't cry over. This is okay. Look, don't shoot the messenger. This was a direct channel. Spirit just said, you can't cry over spilled milk forever. At some point you got to get up and start doing something about it. At some point you got to get up and clean that milk up. Right. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Fine. So now, and it's interesting because the color that I'm getting for the collective consistently lately is yellow. So this is a time for taking action. Even though, yes, we're moving into the winter season, every, many of us are kind of in this like hermit mode. Just because you're in hermit mode doesn't mean you're completely inactive. Hermit mode moments are a perfect time for you to do some work on yourself or for yourself, right? While you're spending all that time isolated from everyone else, why not get some things done? Why not do some remodeling in the in the home that is your internal reality? You know what I mean? Now's the time to get this done or get some of this done at least. Look, Six of Pentacles, all right? I, I'm so sad that I can't find my lamp. But the Six of Pentacles came out symbolizing reciprocity. But also, this is like a time to give back to yourself. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Um, I want to try and find my lamp because this is annoying me. But you know what? I'm not going to be able to find it. So don't worry about it, Eric. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay, cool. So I'm going to give this one more shuffle. And... We're going to see what else we have for the day, yeah? Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. That didn't work so well, but you know what? It's fine. Okay. Here we go, guys. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Wednesday, December 5th, 20... No, sorry, December 4th. Wednesday, December 4th, 2019. I am about to sneeze. Excuse me. <coughs> <clears throat> okay, all right. So, Wednesday, December 4th, 2019. All right, here we go.
Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys. <clears throat> We're giving this three shuffles. One. For the collective, Wednesday, December 4th, 2019. Last shuffle. Oh, geez. Oh, yeah, we're going to do that one more time. One more time. Okay. All right. Here we go. Let's see what we've got for the collective today. What's going on with the collective today? Ooh, that was interesting. All right. Nothing so far. Let's keep going. Wednesday, December 4th for the collective here. Hmm. Really? Oh, see, see, I called y'all out. Now you don't want to talk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh boy. Wednesday, December 4th for the collective. What have we got here? What have we got? Oh, come now. Come, really? Oh, well, there's that two of cups again. Interesting. Okay. All right. Let's see what else we get. Interesting. That's enough. Okay. Ew, whoa. Okay. Overall energy, we have the Two of Pentacles with the King of Cups. We also have the Queen of Swords and the King of Wands. Everybody's back is turned. It's interesting. You have the Page of Swords here, but the Page of Swords has come out in reverse. You also have the Two of Cups, and you have the Hanged Man. <clears throat> this Two of Cups came out yesterday, along with that Ten of Swords. Now, this could be a situation in which someone is working on getting their... Getting their... I guess you could say getting their shit together? I don't know. Like... Working on gaining some sort of autonomy, working on gaining your power, pulling your power back in, gaining your power back after a really tumultuous situation. Again, I don't want to diminish what someone is going through or what someone is feeling with that Ten of Swords energy. It's just the message was very clear. Someone, It's like someone was allowing the past hurt or the pain to eclipse the rest of their lives. And that's not... I mean, it was. It might have been a really rough situation, but, and it might have been very, very painful. It might have really broken you into, broken you apart into like millions of different pieces. But that doesn't mean that it has to. You have to allow it to consume your life. Okay, that's that's basically the message that was coming through there. All right. So now you have the Queen of Swords, the King of Wands, and yet the Page of Swords is reversed between the two of them. Uh, so we're dealing with a count. Okay, look, this is for twin. This is a, this is this is for people going through a twin flame situation. I'm not even gonna freaking lie. This is it. The feminine is in the cold Queen of Swords state. She doesn't want to talk to you. She doesn't want. She doesn't even want to know your name. The masculine is in his pride and egoic King of Wands state, prideful ego. And you could say, you could say that this snake that he's communicating with is like the voice of reason, is the one that is, you know, trying to help him to break free from some sort of social, social conformity, um, whatnot, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And yet I don't necessarily believe that's true. I'm, I get kind of getting the feeling like this snake is like the devil in or a devil in the masculine's ear, just kind of egging him on. I, and, and that's not what this, that's not what this symbolizes normally. The snake actually, and I'm sorry, you guys, I don't know if you can actually see that. It's so dark, but you see, he's up here. He's coiled around, it's coiled around the tree and it's like, there's a head right there. But uh, normally in this deck here, what this symbolizes officially is 
the the snake of wisdom the snake of reason even you could call it um it's similar to the snake that persuaded eve to eat from the tree of knowledge and that snake and i know many people that you know really follow the bible um you know really really follow the bible and, and very much so um the, a lot of people consider that snake to be evil i mean it's really a it's really it's really all about your perspective and that perspective would and and that would pose the question is ignorance really bliss again that is that is a subjective point of view here okay um but it but the devil but okay but the snake does play devil's advocate here advocate here oh well wait a second maybe this snake isn't all that bad maybe there isn't maybe there is a hidden agenda of the snake that's whispering in this masculine's ear trying to you know persuading him to do certain things but maybe there is an effort to get that masculine to wake up that's that's a very interesting point of view regardless that's none of your business so don't even worry about that <laughs> that's his deal so if you're that masculine there that's for you to decide but all right okay we're gonna do it this way then but mass let's talk to the masculine for a second but it does seem that someone is gaining some sort of change in, per, in, in perspective here in terms of a relationship or there is a current relationship that is creating, catalyzing, generating a change in perspective here. So masculine, let's talk to the masculine for a second. You're, it feels like you are full of pride at the moment and you're puffing up your chest. You're like, whatever, I don't need her. I don't need him, blah, blah, blah. Like, dude, whatever, man. Like, he's crazy. She's crazy. I don't need that. And then the devil's in your ear whispering away, whispering away, whispering away. And I kind of feel like you're starting to be like, whoa, wait a second. Or at, at some point, you're going to be like, whoa, whoa, wait a second. What do you mean? Why are you saying that? That's not right. Something's not right here. And then, but you see, that's what catalyzes. and Because what I'm seeing here is that whatever, whatever... Whoever this snake is or symbolized for in your life. And I do feel like it's, it almost feels like a friend. A friend. That bad influence friend. You know what I mean? That's what it feels like. And it's like the more this, this individual or this influence whispers in your ear, the more and more you start to wake up and you're like, wait a second. Is that really what we're doing here? Something's not right. Hmm. Mm. but it's all being catalyzed by this relationship two of cups the hanged man for the feminine it's it's very similar i mean it's not as she as she's more in isolation she doesn't really feel like she has anybody really whispering in her ear if she is communicating with people these are really good friends or people that she really feels she can trust he or she it doesn't matter we're not we're not talking gender here we're talking energy But she's gaining some, the, the feminine here is also gaining some sort of change in perspective too, in, in terms of this relationship. And that's literally what a twin flame relationship is. I promise you guys, go watch that video from Matt Kahn. I may even um, post it, post a link to it in the description box. Check the description box. I might have, if I remember it, I'm going to try my hardest to remember, but I'm going to post that or, or. Should I just post it in the community tab? I'll figure it out. It'll be somewhere. Don't worry. But you have the two of pentacles with the king of cups. Okay. What I, whatever I feel, that's your overall energy. And that's for both sides of this equation here, both masculine and feminine. So I feel like both of you are in an energy of learning to become emotionally mature. Uh, and more specifically, emotionally responsible. But... There is an energy of keeping up appearance here, keeping up that dog and pony show in the meantime, in the, in the, while, this, while, you, some, while both of you are in the process of cultivating this King of Cups energy, okay? It's very interesting, you guys. Very, very interesting. All right. So let's get into some clarification for you. 
I want to look at the dynamic between the two of you here. Queen of Swords, King of Wands, Page of Swords in reverse. Ain't nobody talking to each other. Nobody's talking to nobody. Mm -mm. You think I want to talk to yo ass? That's what this sounds like. <laughs> Both of you are saying that too. So it's not like one side is like sitting over here pining over you, wishing the other would talk. Now, there could be a level of that deep down, but like on the surface, ain't nobody saying shit. Backs are turned, pride and egos are activated on both sides. Ain't nobody saying shit. Now, this could be this page of swords here. There could have been an argument. There could have been a really nasty, petty argument that has happened between the two of you that has really caused you to go in your separate directions. And with this Two of Pentacles and the King of Cups, what I'm feeling is if there was a really nasty argument, the both of you are, are like in your own corners, licking your wounds, trying to convince yourselves that what you said or what you did was justified when both of you know that you made some really low blow. You made some, you, <laughs> you that was low. <laughs> now, notice that I'm laughing. I'm not trying to pass, pass judgment on you. I've been there, girl, guy. I've been there, honey, all right? I've done, said some shit and done some things, and I've turned around and been like, damn, Eric, you really didn't have to go that far. You know what I mean? So, yes, I'm going to laugh along with you. At, at the moment, you, it might sting, okay? It might sting at the moment, but hey. It yields what it yields, right? Shit happens. Learn from it and move forward. Don't let this, you can't let this eclipse your whole life, right? Okay, let's look into this a little deeper here. Queen of Swords, King of Wands, Page of Swords in reverse. Three shuffles. And this is the Wild Unknown Tarot deck. One last shuffle here. Ooh, take this one. Well, look, there's the Queen of Wands. Interesting. All right, we'll see what she has. What's, we'll talk about her in a second. Let's look, let's look a little deeper here. The Empress. The Moon. Overall energy is of justice. Ooh, okay. And the Knight of Pentacles with the Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands wanted to come out. I'm not going to lie. This Queen of Wands energy is almost feeling like a third party, a mistress. I don't, that's weird. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm picking up on that. Maybe it is. Maybe your situation is. Oh well. Okay. Um, there might be a divorce coming. Might be a divorce in the works. Because the Queen of Swords can be a divorcee. The Queen of Swords is also someone tends to be someone that's been really hurt, quite a bit. Um. But then you have the moon with the sun, with the knight of pentacles and the empress here. This queen of wands could also be an energy of, of gaining, someone gaining their power back. I do feel like there's a, a bit of arrogance, pride, ego coming through with the queen of wands. I mean, it, was, it would match the king of wands, so okay. But you do have the counterparts in the king and the queen, all right? It's just that it could be in this situation, this queen with this individual, which was once the queen of, in the queen of wands energy to match your king of wands energy is now in the queen of swords energy. Something has happened. That has hurt someone pretty bad, pretty bad. Um, and there may be a lack of communication right now, but that doesn't have to be that way forever. The Empress is giving me an energy of abundance here, okay? Um, is saying that reconciliation is possible. It's going to take some time, and there are, there are a lot of illusions that have set in that are going to need to be ab abolished, but yet... Oof. Also, though, this could really symbolize... 
with the moon here, uh, secrets being revealed. You have someone that was the empress, the other person was the queen of wands. Someone was the truth, someone was the real embodiment, and someone was a counterfeit. This definitely feels like some sort of mistress situation. Third party somehow. Mm, I hear false advertising. But also, but now this Knight of Pentacles can symbolize a lesson. Very interesting. Knight of Pentacles also talks about the slow and steady process of rebuilding, of healing the situation. Good Lord. What I'm also getting here is someone... Oof. I, heard, I just heard someone took the bait. And that was, that was in reference to this Queen of Wands energy. This Queen of Wands feels like a fraud. Compared to this Empress energy. You know what I mean? And someone was going really slow. I feel, it almost feels like someone had a choice between two, two feminine figures. Whether it's two women... Two men that are of the, more of a feminine nature. It doesn't matter. So it's like someone had a choice, and what I, and this feels really sinister. But what what's growing the, the 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 image that's that's developing in my mind about this, in my intuition is the fact that someone was the truth as the empress, and someone was a counterfeit as the queen of wands, and someone took the bait of the queen of wands instead of having faith in the empress. But the reason why this person took the bait is because they aligned with this Queen of Wands energy as the King of Wands. So now, wait a second. Let's turn it around a little bit. Is it this King of Wands that was under the wrong impression? Or is it this Empress? Are you, as an Empress, going after someone that is merely just a King of Wands rather than an Emperor himself or herself? Could this be with this Knight of Pentacles and the Moon? Could this be a lesson for you? In seeing past the illusion? Was this King of Wands not all that he's chalked up to be? Not all that he made himself out to be? Is that the justice? The lesson that's being learned here? Hmm. My, my. Which leads us right to the Two of Cups with the Hanged Man. A change in perspective in terms of or catalyzed by a relationship. Or should we call this a situationship? Mm. Let's look a little deeper into that, shall we? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Let's see. Two of Cups and the Hanged Man. What's the deal with this? Let's look a little deeper here. Two of Cups and the Hanged Man. What is this? Six of Wands. Nine of... Oh, five of Swords. Ooh. Overall energy is the Eight of Wands. And very interesting. So it looks like you've ov you're overcoming some sort of self-defeating elements. Self-sabotage. The Five of Wands... I'm sorry, the Five of Swords here is giving me an energy of self-sabotage. And yes, it is... Sure, uh, for the most part, it is at the, at the hands or the will of other people. But the self-sabotage aspect or element comes in with you engaging with them to begin with, not recognizing or not allowing yourself to recognize your worth and settling for something less than you are worthy of, right? Which is low vibrational individuals that just want to take advantage of you. That's literally what it felt like. 
people that just want to take advantage of you, people that just want to use you, people that just want to siphon your energy and use it for their own shady means. I mean, that type of shit, right? You're learning a lesson though, aren't you? And with this Eight of Wands energy here, you have the opportunity to, I mean, like the air is clear, perfectly clear for you to, to, move, to move far and fast from this type of energy. This is literally what a twin flame situation will do for you. A twin flame situation, and I, I, I promise you guys, I am going to post this video. I might post it in the description box of this video, and I might post it in the community tab of, of, my, of my channel because, like, it explained everything. And I mean, this is just, I, I, you can say it's a subjective opinion. I personally don't believe that anyone is an expert on twin flame situations. But some of the things that he was saying, and, I, and I, again, I recognize that this video has been out there for a long time, okay? I get it. If you want to say I'm late to the party, then damn it, I'm late to the party. But at least I made it, <laughs> okay? But the thing about it is that I was watching that video yesterday. I was actually just listening as I was going about my day, running errands and a bunch of stuff. And there were things that he was saying. It was like, oh my God, I've come to that conclusion my, as well, myself. I totally get it. And I may not have said it in this way. I truly don't try, I truly don't try to talk about the Twin Flame situation, but maybe I should especially with the perspective that I got from that video that only helped confirm what I already believed about it. It's perfect. A twin flame situation is going to show you all of the ways that you are not loving and respecting yourself and is going to force you into submission in terms of loving yourself. Now, obviously, it's not going to dictate how you do that. No, loving yourself is loving yourself the way you need to be loved, the way you want to be loved. But it's damn sure going to force you into submission. The more you resist, the more the twin flame situation will show up in your life. Anybody, anybody can experience a twin flame situation. The main goal of a twin flame relationship is to get you to love yourself fully, unconditionally, <clears throat> okay? That is the main goal. Whether you end up in a relationship or a marriage with that person or whichever person is showing up in your life in that moment that is representing the twin flame situation to you is, that's all you. It, but keep in mind, it may very well not happen. It doesn't have to happen. You don't have to end up in a, in a, a marriage or a long-term romantic relationship with someone that is a twin flame for you. You absolutely do not have to. Okay? But what you absolutely do need to do in this twin flame situation is learn how to love yourself. And that is exactly what you're, someone is getting right here. So, what is your change in perspective in terms of a relationship releasing yourself from the destruction from the self-sabotage from the lose lose situations five of swords to the six of wands okay you have the clear and open air to do it but somebody is allowing this pain to eclipse their life can't do that no more. It's divine decree, they just said. You can't do that no more. <laughs> but that's also, you, none of us, it's not just, it, please, it's not personal. None of us can do that anymore. We are, that is not, that is the, that is the, that is the exact paradigm that we are shifting out of right now. Collectively, okay? It's time to wake up. It's time to put all that bullshit aside. Bury it. Bury it so deep that even the dog can't dig it up. You know what I'm saying? We're done with that. <laughs> okay. Let's get Spirit's take on this. And then we're going to get our Oracle guidance. And we're getting our Oracle... Oh, darn it. I don't have my Oracle cards again. That's okay. 
I'll get them in a second, but we're going with our crystal. We're going with the crystal mandala today. But let's get Spirit's take on this. Just Spirit's last bit of advice before we move forward. Okay. All right, here we go. Oh, the Nine of Cups. Oh, but you see, guys, come on, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, 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 yep. The Wheel of Fortune. It is time to step off this karmic wheel. And what does that mean? Because that's been coming out a lot lately. And even Matt Kahn said it in that video. And, and it's so crazy because I have been, I mean, I have been channeling that for such a long time, getting off the karmic hamster wheel. What is that wheel? The karmic wheel that we're talking about here is the wheel of pain, is the wheel of this, this drama, right? It's this, this feeling of, okay, I know you from somewhere. We have this really deep spiritual connection and we get all wrapped up in the, woo, we have a deep spiritual connection. And then all of a sudden, all the pain starts, all the memories of why we're still so energetically attached to this individual starts to come up. And instead of healing that, instead of ending those cycles we continue to engage with this person thinking i have a soul contract with you i have a deep spiritual connection with you i have to spend the rest that means i have to spend the rest of my life with you or that means you have some significant uh, significant uh, meaning in my life and now i have to like shape my whole world around you no no that's the big common mistake that we're making we have these attachments, these soul ties to these people. Thank you, Spirit. We have these soul ties to these people because we have built up negative karma and pain and hurt that we need to work through with them. But working through it with them doesn't necessarily mean that we have to spend the rest of our lives together. No, working through them means working through it with them could very well mean recognizing the pain and the hurt recognizing the common theme whatever this five of swords would represent for you and putting an end to it please watch this video from matt khan i'm going to post it somewhere it's like an hour and a half long please especially for those of us for those of you that are like fairly new to this twin flame dynamic and journey please i'm begging you instead of ending the karmic contract we keep up appearance. Six of cups in reverse, two of pentacles upright. We keep juggling. We keep trying to find a balance in a situation that is not capable of being balanced in that way. Most likely. At least that's what this feels like. Nine of cups. Ooh. Oh. Oh my God. The devil with the seven of swords. I mean, come on, guys. Your satisfaction comes when you stop juggling and you lay this situation to rest. Two of pentacles in reverse, six of cups in reverse, devil and the seven of swords. I'm going to throw all of this in reverse and I'm going to leave this one upright. This is when you will find your satisfaction, your happiness, your contentment. This is when you will be in the perfect vibration, the perfect space for the universe to bring you what it is you truly desire. But in order for you to do that, you've got to clean this up first. Five of swords, you've got to clean this up first. The devil with the seven of swords, the devil being that attachment, the devil being the codependency, the devil being the toxicity, coupled with that seven of swords. And it's like you are literally allowing someone to steal from you. To, what, that, what this feels like here is you are literally allowing someone to steal your life force, to siphon your life force from you. And it's time to put that to rest. Y'all, it is time to stop that shit. Please excuse me. I'm getting our Oracle deck out of my closet of tricks here. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. You like my sweatpants? Boston University. My sister went to Boston University. Shout out to Boston University. <laughs> okay. 
All right, here we go. Let's get your Oracle Guidance for this. And now keep in mind, guys, I know we, for the last 45 minutes, I've been referring to things as like a twin flame situation, but it doesn't have to be that. Okay, well, Spirit just said, okay, yes, Eric, but it is that. All right, fine. But if you don't necessarily resonate with the twin flame situation, that doesn't mean that you're excluded from this reading. Okay, just, I, that's, I just wanted to say that. All right, let's get into your Oracle guidance for this. In some cases, somebody here is learning to be the empress that they are. That's what this is. Okay, Oracle Guidance. Two of them. All right. I can dig it. We've got two today, kids. So buckle up. We've got card number 36, Ascended Master Mataji and Crimson Cooperite. Relief and repair. Holy moly. Oh, man. And then we have card number 50, Goddess Persephone and Ruby, the inner queen. Someone is learning to be, to embody the empress energy that they are. The divine feminine. Okay. And I'm so sorry, if you're a masculine and you're watching this, it, it kind of feels like you're being excluded here, but. You can learn from this as well. You are not being excluded. You can, in fact, learn from this. But it's mainly the feminines that watch these readings. All right? I apologize, guys. But we've, we've been getting some messages for you lately. So, okay. All right. But, but masculines, you totally could learn from this, too. Okay? Anyway. All right. We're going to start with 36. Okay, here we go. We bring you the blessing of relief and repair. Our warmth and nurturing will restore and rebalance your body, mind, and soul when the light of spirit burns too brightly. Spiritual light is like the light of the sun. It brings life and joy, but too much can burn. If that happens to you, you will feel overwhelmed, overheated, overexcited, or overstretched mentally, physically, or emotionally. We will help you recover and increase your ability to be exposed to spiritual light again in, in future without becoming overloaded or burnt out. We ask you to soften and relax into our rich red energy now, which nurtures you with the cooling, restorative life force of the Earth Mother. We shall help you naturally discharge excess energy whilst we revive, strengthen, and fortify you with our nourishing grace. Beautiful. And then you have the inner queen. Please, please, please excuse my manicure. <laughs> I'm, I'm fairly embarrassed by it, but you know what? It's fine. It's life. Shit happens, right? Okay. <laughs> we bring you the empowerment of the inner queen. The inner queen exercises authority through divine feminine wisdom. Her empowerment is active within men and women that consciously seek to honor feeling, instinct, and intuition, and choose to live their lives according to a moral code, moral code of compassion. When the inner queen stirs within, judgment is replaced with empathy for your own suffering and that of others. Let me say that again. When the inner queen stirs within, judgment is replaced with empathy for your own suffering and that of others. You can understand that human beings who cannot resolve their suffering will unconsciously act out their pain in the world. They are unconsciously expressing their inner story with their own, um, sorry, with their outer actions, the story of their inner pain. The healing power of the inner queen brings inner pain to consciousness where it can finally be released and the soul freed. This can happen because of her compassion. She does not approach life with a fearful or judging nature, so she can move freely through all realms, witness great pain and darkness, and remain centered in her heart, shining a gentle light of intention for the liberation from suffering for all beings. She reminds us of our innate divine dignity and the healing power of our compassion. 
beautiful so also this is definitely this definitely could be resonating with those of you with those masculines out there that are dealing or yeah are dealing with the rise and empowerment of their own inner feminine energy absolutely 100 percent could be dealing with that and so that could be where for uh, for some of the masculines out there i feel like this is specifically in terms of recognizing who your real friends and who your real enemies are Bing, bing, bing. I think that's, I think that's kind of it for you guys. That's what I'm feeling, at least. It could be man, it could manifest in a plethora of different ways, but that's kind of the biggest thing that I was picking up for you. All right, guys. So there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, I hope you guys have a fan fantastic day. I'm going to do my best to keep you guys updated on share because it's share. So. <laughs> So um, stay tuned to Instagram. I'm going to do my best to like take pictures and videos and stuff like that. Okay. I love you all so very much. And I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah. Take care. Mwah. Bye.